have a little time after this class today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been talking about modules, modularizing a program. <clears throat> the idea behind a module is that you can cluster some code together so you can invoke it just with a single word. Like I can make a list of instructions for you on how to bake a cake. And then I want a cake. I give you the instructions. You go and do that. Then you bring me the cake. And all I have to do is like one thing. Just give you a piece of paper. You came back with a cake. So yeah. here we have a function for whatever. I mean, I can't read the writing, but we know that it does something. It's got a name. And then when the main code invokes it by using its name followed by parentheses, it comes and it does all that stuff, and then it returns, right? Just like you returned with my cake. And this function could be called from several different places in the code. I'm calling it a function. That's what most programming texts call it. This one calls it a module. I will use those terms interchangeably. And then, you know, later on, it could call the same thing. What if I want two cakes, right? You know, or what if my friend over here and this other program needs to call that cake? They could do that. So we're going to play with modules today. We're going to use turtle graphics just because it's awesome. Maybe not that awesome, but, but people tend to enjoy them, and the things that they learn from them tend to kind of stick in the brain. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let's go ahead and pick up idle. I can't believe I didn't have your number, camera. But I didn't. All right. You'll always get notices. Like, I hope you didn't show up on Monday because I sent texts out about it and email and stuff. Yeah, I got the email. Okay, you got the email. Good deal. All right. Where was it going? Oh, yeah. We're going to make some modules. <clears throat> so, as always, I like a comment block up at the top. And what is this? The purpose of this is demonstration of modules. First ones are, are going to be much less interesting than turtle graphics. Instead, we're just going to define a module that like adds two numbers together and then multiplies two numbers together, two different modules. So define def <coughs> space add to add two parentheses x comma y end parentheses and you don't have to space it out like I am colon and what are we going to do? We want to add x and y to each other and return that result. So I'm going to make a variable called r for result. r equals x plus y. And then on the next line, <coughs> return r. All right, now I'm going to do a mult to, right? Or tell you what, let's call it times 2, and it just doubles the number that's passed in. All right, so like x times 2. Def, def <coughs> times 2, and it's just going to have one parameter. We're only passing one number in. If we call times 2 and we pass in 10, 10 times 2 is 20. So times 2, parentheses x, <coughs> I can't believe my voice, in parentheses, colon, R for result <coughs> equals x times 2. <coughs> That's I accidentally typed a minus sign, sorry. R equals x star 2. Return R. <coughs> All right, my program is looking like a winner. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now, it's actually not going to do much yet. But I'm going to save it. What lecture are we on today? Uh, it looks like. All right, so I go ahead and run it. And it didn't do a darn thing. Well, really, it did. It defined the functions, just like me drawing up the recipe for the cake. But the cake doesn't get baked, made just because I drew up the recipe, right? Not like it's magically baking itself on, while I'm typing up the recipe. So these functions have been defined, but they haven't been called. 
I could even call them in the shell now that they've been run. I could do this. Times 2, parentheses, 100, in parentheses, and it's going to print 200 because that's what it returned. Right? Or I could do add 2, and I could pass in, you know, like 1,000 and 2,000, and it's going to print out 3,000 because those things are add up to 3,000, like that. So the return statement is what makes it possible to get that feedback back from it, right? We added two numbers, but if we didn't have a return statement, then we wouldn't get it back. Temporarily, I'm going to comment this out. Or, no, this one's easier to type. I'm going to comment that one out. And you don't need to do this. This is just for demonstration purposes. But if I run it now, and then I do times 2, and I try to type in 100 there, uh, something weird happened, and I'm not sure what. Let me, uh, the shell can act a little quirky. Alrighty. So now that I've run it, I can do times 2, and I can type in 100, and it doesn't do anything, right? It didn't return anything. Like, right? I told you to go make me a cake, but I didn't specify that I wanted you to bring it back to me, right? So you get to keep the cake. I don't get anything out of it. That's what the return statement does. Now, you can put a return statement without a variable after it, in which case, it comes back from the function, but it still didn't bring you anything. A return statement without a variable is not necessary. We'll talk more about that later. Let, let's just run with this for now. Okay. So, if we wanted to call those modules, we could do something like this. A is equal to add to, and please add the numbers 10, 20. So, A equals add to, parentheses, 10, 20, in parentheses. And then B is equal to times 2, parentheses, A. What's B going to equal when it, by the time we're done? B should equal whatever 60, right? Yep, if, because 10 plus 20 is 30, and then that gets passed into here, and that gets doubled and returned. So 30 times 2 is 60. So, yep, at this point, B equals 60. And up here, don't have to add the comments if you don't want to, but A now equals 30. All right, so to use the turtle library, we have to add an import turtle up at the top, and we better make sure that there's no other file named turtle in the same directory. We'll find that out real soon. Like if you saved a prior lecture as turtle.py, it's going to break this one, and we'll have to go and rename it or delete it. So anyways, import, space, and then all lowercase turtle. And just to test it, I'm going to actually create the turtle object. So I have to give the turtle object a name. I can just call it T or TT. I'm going to call this one Fred because that's easy for me to type. Fred equals, and this is all lowercase, turtle dot and now the next letter is uppercase capital T turtle turtle parentheses in parentheses don't forget those parentheses now that's enough to test it If, when you run this, it pops up a screen like that, you're good to go. We can continue on our merry ways. Anybody stuck on this point? So it's just Fred equals turtle turtle? Right, right. And if you're at home and it fails, go and see if there's another file in the same directory named turtle.py. In fact, I better add that as a comment. If this doesn't work, make sure there's not. <clears throat> a file in the same folder named turtle.py. What folder would I look for? Is it not working? I mean, it, it gives me a screen, but it has a little, like, arrow. That's what it's supposed to do. Oh. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. Right. <clears throat> you would know real fast if it wasn't going to work. Um, 
this would give you a red error message. I'm not going to demonstrate it, but uh, I mean, I could. Then I'd have to delete this file I'm about to do. All right. People watching, do not do as I'm doing. This is just a demonstration. Say uh, in the past, I created a file called turtle.py. And then now I try to get this program to work. It blows up. Turtle has no attribute turtle. And the reason why <clears throat> is because I have created a file that it's using rather than the turtle library, which is down in the guts of the Python directory. It uses whatever's in my folder preferentially over going somewhere. Look, right? Like if I wanted a pencil, I'd probably grab the one on the desk before I would go and search the drawers for it. So rather than go and find the turtle library down in the guts of the Python directories, it's just using the one that I created. And so it's breaking it. You can cause similar problems by naming things um, math. If you make a file called math.py, then you probably won't be able to import the math library. Let's get rid of that file now that I've messed everything up. If when you run it, you get the uh, white screen with the triangle in the middle, the cursor, we're ready to go. So let's... Well, what happened to the code above it? It's still here. It's still, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not printing anything from it, right? I, I could print out A and B if I wanted to, but I'm not even bothering. So here's what I'm going to do is uh, let's draw a triangle. Pops up the two screens whenever you hit run. Right. When I hit run, it brings up the graphics window, and, then and it brings up the shell behind it. Yeah. And I'm fond of just closing the shell every single time I run something. I'm saying if you did the shell, if you did times two, whatever, it's still working. Right. Times two, 100. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. 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 Yeah. Those those functions have been created. They're just not doing anything. Okay, so let's make the turtle draw something like a, a triangle. So he's going to go forward a certain number of pixels, and then he's going to turn 120 degrees. Why am I making it 120? Because a circle has 360, and this thing's going to have three sides, so 360 divided by 3 is 120. If it's going to have four sides, 360 divided by 4 is 90, like 90 degree angles to make a square. So anyways, let's do it. Fred... Dot, I could type out the whole word forward, but people always leave off R's, so I'm going to make it fred.fd. They, they conveniently provided an abbreviation. Go forward 100. Go forward fred.fd parentheses 100 end parentheses. And then let's turn them to the left. fred.left parentheses 120 because I want them to be a triangle. And the triangle has three sides, so I want to repeat those commands three times. Or I want it to happen three times. So I'm going to copy and paste that two more times. Now, anytime you hear the words copy and paste, you ought to think, ask yourself two questions. Do you feel lucky, punk? No, you ought to ask yourself um, if you want to make it a loop or if you want to make it a function. Well, we could make it a loop, and maybe we'll do that later. But just for now, I'm going to copy that stuff, paste it, and paste it. So now it's going to draw three lines. And we have our triangle. It would be better if we put these so-called magic numbers into variables so that we could change the size of it if we wanted to. Right? What if I want an itty bitty triangle? What if I want it to only be 10? I'd have to change all three of these to 10. And then when I, you don't need to make this change because we're going we're gonna to make it a beat, right? And so I drew an itty bitty one. 
I'd rather that be stored in a variable rather than hard-coded as an unnamed constant, a magic number. So let me undo those things. And I'm, maybe I'll call it side, right, for side length. So side, oops, not sued. Side equals 100. Can't type. And then replace all these 100s with sides. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste that 100. You see, if you just double-click on the number, it highlights it. Makes it easy. Replace it. Now I'm leaving the variable, the, the 120 alone. It'd probably be nice to go ahead and make that a, a, a variable too. So I think I will. I said I was leaving it alone, but I think I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to create a second variable up here underneath side called angle. Angle equals 120. And then I'm going to replace all these 120s with that variable name. So I'm going to select angle, copy, paste, paste, paste. And now I'm going to run it again, and it's going to do the exact same thing, but that's a good thing. Right? Why is it a good thing? Because just by changing one number, like making that 200 instead of 100, draw something different. Now what if I change this? It's no longer going to look good. Like what if I change that to 90? It's not going to magically fix itself to draw a square, but it's going to draw three sides of the square. So I'm going to undo that change right now. In fact, I'll undo them both. I'm going to leave it 100 and 120. All right. Anybody need eyeballs on your screen? I would like to make this a function so that I could call it and it would draw the triangle for me. Here's what I want to be able to do. I'm going to put a line down here and then I'm going to delete it and I'll put it back in a minute. I want to be able to do this. Triangle and say 200 and it'll make a great big triangle. And then triangle and then 50 and make a small triangle. That's the way I want it to work. I'm going to delete those for now. I'll put it back in after we make this a function. All functions start with what keyword? Yep, DEF. So let's come up here. DEF space triangle. And are we going to pass in a parameter? Yes, we are, because we want to be able to specify the size. We want to be able to tell it to make a, long, a small triangle of side length 10 or a huge triangle of 1,000 or whatever. So DEF triangle parentheses side, S-I-D-E, end parentheses, colon. Now, since we are passing this variable in, we don't want this line of code here anymore. I mean, it wouldn't crash it, but it would always draw the same size of triangle, no matter what. So I'm going to have to delete that one, and I'm going to have to make another change, too, because notice that up here, every time we defined a function, everything that was in the function needed to be indented. Anytime you have a colon on a line, the next code has to be indented. So, since I'm passing this in as a parameter variable, I need to remove that one. Delete side equals 100 or whatever you change this value to. And these guys, they all need to be tabbed. Now let me show you the, the slow way of tabbing stuff. Tab, arrow, arrow, arrow. Tab, arrow. No, not that. That's, that's boring. Instead, highlight everything and either hit the tab key on the keyboard or go up to format indent like that and now it's all tabbed over alrighty now I'm gonna run it and the code has actually been broken for the same reason that originally it wasn't printing any numbers when I called add to and etc. Now why is that? Why didn't it draw anything? Yeah, we never called it, right? I could come over here and do it now. I could do triangle 200, and then if I skip back over to the other window, I'll see that it drew it. Oh, come on. Right? Triangle 10, 50. Right? 
triangle, six, you know, 80, whatever, right? But we want to call that in our code. We don't just want to have to type that into the shell each time. So down here, triangle, 100, triangle, 200, triangle, 300. So it's working. We can get a lot of code to execute with a single command now. By issuing this single command, it goes and it runs and does all eight of these, or however many there are. Whoops, I meant to pause the recording. So let's write something called, I don't know, three triangles, something like that, or mult underscore try for multiple triangles. I think I'm just going to delete these three lines for now. So define mult underscore tri for multiple triangles. And even if it doesn't work immediately, let's go ahead and assume that we're going to be passing in a variable that lets us specify how many we want to draw. Our first try may not actually use that variable, but then we'll fix it so it does. Right? So, def mult underscore try, parentheses, x in parentheses colon. Yeah, I think we will use it right off the bat. I want to loop and I want it to repeat it. Like if this was going to be set to three, I want it to draw three triangles. To get that to work, there's more than one way I could do it. I could use a while loop, I could use a for loop. I'm going to go ahead and show you the syntax of the for loop, which I'm not expecting you to have super duper memorized, but it's the easiest way to set this up. So I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. For, how about T for triangle? For T space, in the word in for t space in space and in range parentheses x in parentheses colon that's a loop statement it's called a for loop it's going to repeat the code however many times we pass in if that was set to a three it would repeat the code three times tell you what i'm going to leave it three for now like i said um it's not going to be perfect because it's not accepting a value for x. And then we're going to make a couple of changes that will make it perfect. So what do I want to do? The first thing we're going to do is triangle. How big do we want it? 100. Triangle parentheses 100 in parentheses. Notice that this is uh, tabbed over. Right? And then let's turn. And if we're going to draw three triangles, we better turn 120 degrees for the same reason, like 360 divided by 3 is 120. So our turtle's name is still Fred. So Fred dot right, Fred dot right, parentheses 120 in parentheses. And I'm going to add a return statement, although not strictly necessary, just because it makes the code easier to read. The only time the return statement is absolutely necessary is if you're returning a value, like that. If we're not returning a value, we don't need it, but it kind of makes the code easier to read, and that's how the pseudocode looks. How come on some of the parentheses you put spaces in between? I just try, I just do, yeah, why do I put spaces and why not? I do it on a whim as I'm typing if I think it makes it easier to read. You can leave them off, you can put them in there. Okay. Right. It doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter. Exactly. Very good point. To me, that, that's a little bit harder for the people in the back to read, but I could be wrong. Maybe the spaces make it harder to read. Yeah, I was being inconsistent. Okay. Now I'm going to call mult underscore try. So down here at the bottom, or the Malt underscore TRI, parentheses three. We want to draw three triangles. All right. And the 
to kind of draw a nuclear fallout symbol or whatever. What if I wanted it to draw four triangles? This is not going to work. I mean, it's not going to crash. It's just not going to draw four of them. And the reason why is that although we have this parameter here and we passed in an argument, we're not actually using it. Looks like an easy enough fix, though, right? If we make that an X, then it'll draw as many triangles as we specify down here. So this line right here, I'm going to go back and revise it so that that's an X. So it'll actually draw the number of triangles specified by this argument. And this argument's going to fill in that parameter, that parameter variable. All right, it drew three triangles. And then it drew the fourth one again, right? It drew it right on top of it. I probably wanted it so that it would, you know, keep all of them on screen. So like if I drew four triangles, I would see them all, not, not just three and then start repeating them. To do that, I'm going to have to change this angle. I don't want to do 120 every time. If we're drawing four triangles, I want it to do 90. So I'm going to make this an equation, a little bitty equation here. 360 divided by x. Again, spacing doesn't matter. Now it should draw four. Yeah, it worked. Now these are all perfect triangles or whatever, right? Um, I have no idea how we would modify the code to, you know, do right triangles or things like that. It's possible. I'm just not going to figure out how to do it. What if I change this to eight? Molt underscore try eight. What if I want to speed it up if I think that's kind of slow? I'm going to set a speed command up here at the top. So right after we create Fred the turtle, the next line under that is going to be fred.speed. I'm going to set it to 10, which is near max. 1 being slow is 10 being max, but then if you set it to 0, it removes all delay whatsoever. So 0 is actually the fastest speed. There. I like that a lot better. Let me show you the difference between that and 0 there. If I made this 0 instead, it means draw it with no delay at all. Boom. That's kind of neat. I'm going to leave it at that. Right? So... I'm going to add a comment as to what we just did there. Fastest possible speed. Now, why they set 1 as the slowest, 10 as the fastest, and then 0 even faster, I don't know. But So this is a for loop. Why did I put it in a for loop? Now don't do this. I'm showing you how I could replace this code. All right, I'll be right there. I could have done this. Don't do this, like I said, because I'm going to take it out. There. This code here is the same as this, right? Because it has this block of code repeated three times. Well, here we are repeating the code three times by using the for loop. This number is how many times it's going to repeat. I'm going to undo all that and walk around just a sec. So in the range you put x? Ah, yeah, 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 that, that would do it. I had this at 3 for a while, and it was stuck drawing 3, so we changed it to X to match the, the uh, parameter. Very good point. All right, now what about this 100? Do we want to pass that in as another parameter, or do we always want these to be the same size triangles? I think it would be cool to go ahead and allow ourselves to pass in the size of the triangles as a second variable. So, I'm going to delete the 100, 
this is the line we're editing now. And I'm going to replace that with the word size. Now it's going to crash because there's no size variable anywhere. So I have to create a size variable. It's going to be passed in as a parameter. So after the x up here in the definition, here's the line that I'm changing. I'm going to put x comma size. It's still broken though. So I run it and it gives me a red error message that says missing one required positional argument size. It's missing an argument. If I go and look at the code, what am I going to have to do to change it so that it starts working again? This is the line that gave me the syntax error. Yeah, I'm not passing in a size. Yeah, I need to fill, I need to provide an argument that's going to fill in the size parameter. So let's do an itty bitty triangle, 10, 10 pixels. All right. How about 50? 10 was a little bit small for my taste. Cool. How about we call it twice with different sizes? Or maybe I'll just type it in again rather than copy and paste. Molt underscore try. Please draw me four triangles, but make them twice as large. Like that. So 4, 100. Molt underscore try, 4, 100. And we could keep doing that, right? We could keep changing the arguments. The arguments of the variables are the values that fill in the parameters. So the first time we call it, x gets set to 8. And so it loops 8 times. And it draws triangles of size 50, because that's the value, that's the argument that was passed in to fill in size. And then later we come around and we call it again. And we call it with a 4, so x becomes 4. And we call it with a 100 as the second argument, so size is now equal to 100, so it loops four times, but it draws larger triangles because size is now 100. I'm going to take these little comments out. But I may add a comment down here. Eight and 50 are arguments. that fill, whoa, 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 that fill in the x and size parameter variables. That's not going to change it, right? It's just a comment. All right, so that's the idea behind functions, behind modules. Right, drawing a whole bunch of stuff on the screen is easy, is as easy as just one function call. Now I'm going to get ridiculous and pass in a huge number of triangles, you know, like 40. I'm going to draw a whole bunch. Just a second, then I'll come. So mult underscore try 40 of size 100. This is going to be ridiculous, but. Hey, that's not too bad. If any of y'all are old enough to have played with a spirograph as a kid, that's kind of what it reminds me of. So there we go. I think you, you answered my question. I was just wondering, before we would input the values by doing, and when we would run it, we do it in the, I guess, in the shell, but you're doing it in the actual. Right, shell. right. I could. Now, don't do as I do. I'm going to comment these things out. Like I said, don't do as I do. I could run this, it would define all of those functions, and then I could come over here. I'm going to just undo those changes, so I hope you didn't do them. Malt underscore try, and I want, you know, two triangles with a size of 200. Right. So, those functions are left in memory after it runs. But almost always we don't do that. Almost always we put the function calls directly in the code. Now we could go and flowchart it. I'm not really, I don't want y'all to flowchart it, but I'm going to go ahead and try to crank one up really fast. I would just draw it on the board, but then the people at home wouldn't be able to see it. Hmm. 
need to set this little camera up here, pointing it at the board so I can get it up and draw. Anyways, okay, so this code had several math functions to find up at the top. I'm not going to bother defining those. But then it had one called triangle. And please do not feel uh, obligated to uh, do this along with me. Although the textbook probably doesn't show it, I like using the DEF keyword in my module definition. And it accepted one parameter, size or side or something like that. And then it had some code that drew a triangle. It repeated several commands. It did Fred dot forward equal to side length. And then I would have to copy and uh, just, and then it did Fred dot left and it turned left 120 degrees, something like that. And so on. Now that's supposed to be a dot, not not a comma. And then the question becomes, what is Fred? Well, Fred is what's known as a global variable because it was created before any of the functions. These are local variables. That's a local variable because it's local only to that, right? Like you have a local police force, right? And it's available only, you know, in your city or whatever. And then this guy, Fred, up here is a global variable. Like he's the global police. He can be used inside of any of these functions. And I don't know how to flowchart a global variable, so I'm just going to leave that alone and not care. But then our code had this stuff repeated three times to draw a full triangle. I should have made it a loop, right? Because anytime you're copying and pasting, you ought to make it either a loop or a function. In this case, it would have been a loop. And then after all that, we needed a return statement. Even if the function definition doesn't have a return statement, if I forgot to put one on, which is the case here, right? My triangle code didn't have a return statement. If you were drawing a flow chart, you would need to put it there. So now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I'm going to add the return statement to the triangle. Not necessary, like I said, because it'll return anyways. When does it return? As soon as it hits an unindented line. But I'm just doing that so it matches my flow chart a little bit better. All right, so that's one. Now, I wouldn't give myself full credit for that because it doesn't have all these things hooked up with lines. I'm going to be totally cheaty and draw it in the fastest possible way, which is just draw an arrow through everything. But then select all this stuff and bring that to the front. So I did uh, select all. I mean, like, you know, I drew a line through it all. I right clicked and did a range, bring to front. And there, that doesn't look too bad. Is it perfect? Should I have taken the time to draw each and every little arrow? Yeah, I should have. All right, now I'm going to, we had another function called molt try. Same business. It's going to have a DEF up at the top. So we're going to use a terminator or as the textbook called it, I believe, a century. And so somebody who has their code open, remind me what the parameters of the mult underscore try function are. What, go, what went inside the parentheses when we defined it? Um, X comma size. X comma size. All right, cool. Now this one only had one parameter variable. That was just the size of the triangle. This one has two. The number of triangles we're drawing and their size. All right, now that one had a loop, I believe. I need to go and refresh my memory. Had a loop, it had a for loop. Loops are done. with the same shape as if statements. And I'm just going to write for x in range, excuse me, for t in range, I'm copying the code exactly to my memory, like that. Now the book's not going to show you flow charting a for loop like that. And so I don't care too much if you burn that into your brain right now. Now what was the next thing after the for loop statement in our code? Okay, so triangle, parentheses, size, and then there was another line. Fred, uh, right, parentheses, 360 divided by. 
Okay, Fred dot right parentheses 360 divided by x. All right, now for performance reasons, I should have calculated the angle just once up here because this is making us do the math every single time, right? And if we were going to repeat this loop a thousand times, that would be a thousand times that math statement is done. Whereas if I had just done 360 divided by x up here, then the math statement would be, you know, done only once for a performance improvement of a thousand. We're not caring about performance. I just mentioned that. I should have make, calculated this ahead of time. And then I'm going to draw a loop back up here because if it's a loop, it needs to go back to itself. If statements do not go back to themselves, but if that word is for or while, it does. And then we had a return, I believe. Next time I'll ask y'all to, to make the, uh, the flow chart as well. All right, and then lastly, our code was really short. Our main code, which is the unindented code, is marked just with a start. And then it had like several calls to multi triangle. But since they are function calls, oh, and by the way, I messed one of these up. Since they are function calls, they need to be done with a box with the bars. The textbook shows a box with a horizontal bar, but we don't have that. Or do we? Did I see one as I was drawing it? No. I see that one, which is close, but not. Okay, so function calls, module calls are done in a box and a bar. And what did we do the first time we called multi-try? I don't remember how many times. How many times did we call molt try? Or what were the, the arguments for the first molt try call? X comma size. I'm uh What was the question? Sorry. When we called it, not when we defined it. Down here, when we actually called it, oh it's all commented out now. I called it with eight and fifty. And then four and one hundred and forty and one hundred. So the first one's going to be mult underscore try eight comma fifty. And then the second time is the same function call. So I'm going to be cheating and co just copy and paste that. But it had different arguments. And then we called it one more time with different arguments. What was the second set of ar arguments? After 8 and 50. Anybody have their code open? Fine. Fine, let me go look. 4 and 100. And then I think the last one was 40 and 100. And then I had a return statement at the bottom, and my boxes aren't connected. No, it wasn't a return. This is our main code, so it's just going to be a stop. Your main code, all the unindented code, starts with a start, ends in a stop. But your functions begin with the uh, DEF. All right, and then I need the line to hook these guys up. And I need to send that one to the back, arranged in the back. All right, that didn't work. Try again. Arrange, send it back. Why aren't you working for me? Okay, fine. If something's not working when you're trying to draw it, zoom way in and you can select it. And it'll help you. I'm zooming by holding the control key or the alt key and spinning the mouse with. All right. So I made a error. In my flowchart, I would not give myself a 100 for this. I'd give myself a 90. And the reason is, is that one more function call is not done with a box of bars. So in this code, there should also be a box of bars. I need to change one of those rectangles to be a box of bars. I need to change the one that calls this function. So which one is it? That one or that one? The one that calls the function. Yeah, that one, yeah. right? So, I drew the wrong shape. I don't feel like deleting it, so I'm just going to right-click on it and do change shape if I spot that. Yeah, change shape, and then I can choose the correct one. All right. Now, my personal quirk is I like to colorize the functions. So, I'm going to call this triangle. I'm going to select it and make it like a 
pale blue. I'm going to select this one and make it like a pale yellow. And then this one calls the pale blue one. So I'm going to make that one blue. This just makes it pop out easily, uh, easier to read. And these three call that one. So I'm going to color those yellow. All right, there. That is my flowchart of the code that we just wrote. I could even copy and paste the code over here. The only thing that stops me from being completely satisfied with the code is that it doesn't have an import statement and it doesn't create the turtle. I could add two lines of code up here that would do that, right, underneath start, because really those are the first unidentified lines of code. If I go back to my code and do that, right, so this is not, this is not a perfect flowchart. It doesn't demonstrate everything going on, but it's good enough, right? Our flowcharts don't have to be... They don't have to show all the details, right? Because if they did show all the details, I may as well just be programming code. All right, now I'm going to go up and draw stuff anymore. So, which code runs first? Now, even though I drew this one in the third column, since it says start, right, it's actually the one that runs first. And so it starts, and then our first thing is a function call with the arguments 850, which function? Multiply. So it jumps over here, and it runs all this stuff. And this is a for loop, where x gets incremented however many times it was supposed to. At one time, it was 3, right? So this code would have been repeated three times. But now we're passing it in. So this 8 fills in the x, which is used for the for loop. So that now says, effectively, for t in range 8. And so that's code, the function call is repeated 8 times. Each time it does that, it calls this function. You see why I like to colorize it. With the size. Now, where'd the size come from? The size came from this parameter. The size parameter for that function, which was filled in here, right? So the first time we call it, 8 plugs into the x, 50 plugs into the size. We use the x here to dictate how many times it loops. We use the size here to call this function. Now, notice that this has a different name, right? Size and side are named differently. Well, is that a syntax error? No. No, it's not, because you don't have to name that size and the side variables the same thing. Here we didn't have variables at all, right? It wasn't a problem that we called this one 8 and then that one x, right? This just got copied into x. 50 just got copied into size. So when we call triangle, and we pass in a value, it gets copied into this one. It could be anything. We could type in a thousand there, and it's okay. It would fill inside. Now, some people want to see those parameter names match. It makes them feel better. And if I wanted to do that, I could change, you know, this one to say side to match that one, or I could change the other one to say size to match that one. But I'd have to be careful because I'd have to change it everywhere, right? If I change that one to size, I'd have to change that, you know? and that, and that, to match. All righty, does that make sense, gang? Is this a good middle representation of the code that we created? Makes a lot of sense. I hope it is, because if you can kind of visualize the logic, you know, Jedi mind trick, picture it in your brain, and then you can move the rocks around, right? Uh, if we can kind of picture what's going on in our code, it'll be a lot easier for us to program. And that's why we spend a lot of time flowcharting. Um, you know, I've had uh, other instructors, um, you know, who don't teach this class, think that we ought to only spend like one day flowcharting, right? Right, all you have to do is draw some rectangles and some triangles and boom, you know how to flowchart, right? Now, that's not strictly true. We, uh, just a sec, we... Burn, you know, we try to burn this into your brain by introducing one of these at a time. And I only do it a medium amount. There were some instructors here who taught this class without teaching any programming code at all. And all you did is flowcharts and pseudocode, right? Now that would be boring. Yes, sir? Where's the triangle size? Is that supposed to be side? That's what. Or more? It gets filled in by that value. Yeah, the question is, is why is this not side, right? And the reason it's not side is because it's getting filled in with that variable. These are actually two completely different things. This is a value that gets copied and pasted into there. It's like this, if I'm going to tell you to bake a cake, 
I'm not going to give you my recipe book. Instead, I'm going to make a photocopy and give you the photocopy. So this variable gets photocopied and then passed into here. And it doesn't matter whether it's the same name or not, as long as that variable name exactly exists, right? So if I went back to my code and I thought it needed to be side down here, so I changed it. Well, we don't have a side variable, right? All we have is a size variable. Well, could it pick up the size variable from up there? No, because it's going to be column triangle, right? So this stuff happens first. Does that kind of make sense? This variable name does not have to right. be Right, the variable size is within the, uh, what we call it, function multi -trial. And what you're saying, the input for the variable size is coming from the... From here. I wish I could kind of draw a curved line. Let me see if I can. I wish I could draw... You know how like when you take a screenshot on your phone and then you can draw a line from some place to another? Is there a way that I can draw? Yeah, yeah, there is a line. Except I want it to be a straight line or a curved line, so I'm going to see if I can find a place to change that. That 8 fills in the X. And then this 50, I'm going to stretch this out. Whoopsie. Fills in for size. Right? Yeah, the 50 fills in the size. In the function multi -trial. But when I look at that box, is that box not calling a function triangle? It is. All right, this is hard to actually get all the lines to line up right. So when we call the triangle function. The input when we call the triangle function doesn't go into the variable size? It does, right? So Whatever we, like this. 50 fills in that, uh -huh. and that one is used to go here, and it goes over here, and it fills in the side variable. Okay. That makes sense? So the, whatever value is input in the variable size in the multi-try function will be used, that input will go into the... Exactly. Yeah, whatever is here. Triangle in the side variable. Right, right. And so they don't have to have the same name. I could have right. made it the same name, and it would have been easier to understand, right? So in retrospect, I probably should have done that. But on the other hand, it's a good little object learning thing. Right, because now you know that they're, even though they all have the same value, they're different. They're so different, exactly. One is defined in one function, and the other one is defined right. in the other. Right, and so this side variable is local to this function. Mm -hmm. This size variable is local to this one, so he can't use anything called size. He can just get a copy of whatever's in that variable and use for his own purposes. I'm really glad you asked that. Yeah. And that's the way all these things are written behind the scenes. Like we tell Fred to turn left. Somebody else has written a Python program with a left function. Right. And so that, you know, this is the argument that fills in whatever variables defined in the Fred.left. So when you call a function, it's called an argument. Size is the argument. And then when you get to the function, side is the parameter variable that accepts that value, that gets the copy of that value. So we try to use slightly different terminology, and sometimes I goof. But here, side, size is the argument that fills in the side parameter. Eight is the argument that fills in the x parameter. And 50 is the argument that fills in the size parameter. So sometimes something is both a parameter and an argument, right? When we pass in 50, that's the argument. It, get, it fills the size variable. And then when we get here, the size variable is the argument that fills in the side variable. All righty. I think we're going to end like three, four minutes early because I know that we have programming questions. And also know that the ice is building up out there and we may, you know, appreciate an extra 10 minutes to get home, something like that. So are there any more questions about this?
Actually, I want to copy and paste this into my flowchart, but that's y'all didn't draw it, so you don't care whether I'm doing that or not. Let me make a Dropbox for you so you can upload, you know, your code. All right, gang, the Dropbox is there, so you can upload the code if you typed in any there. If you didn't, just upload a note saying you're, you watched the video. If you're doing it at home, there should be a video review form and content that you can come over and describe what you learned from it. That's your video form. I'll post it as a note. Anybody need the code back on the screen while I wander around and help people? Alrighty. Can I see the um, flowchart? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll pull the flowchart back up. Now, I know y'all can't read the writing on it in the back of the room, and I'm sorry about that. I hope the color coding helped. But for y'all watching at home, you don't have to draw the flowchart. 